I can't believe we are getting ready to head into a new year because 2023 was jam-packed with so much fun and it went by so fast. We learned new techniques, we tried new things together like laser cutting, different Cricut things, we built a ton of wood projects, and we also did a ton of Dollar Tree hacks. By far and away, those types of videos are the Craft Buddies favorite here on my channel, so I thought it would be fun to take a look back and share with you some of my favorite quick and easy Dollar Tree hacks that I've shared throughout the year that you definitely are going to want to know heading into 2024. You're watching Whiskey and Wit. My name is Whitney and a huge welcome back to my Whiskey Craft Buddies who are here each and every week to DIY and decorate with me. I am so thankful to have you guys here and back for another year of all the fun. If you want to join us and be a Whiskey Craft Buddy, it's so easy to do. Just hit subscribe down below and make sure the little bell notification is on so YouTube notifies you every time I post a video and you can craft along with us. Now let's get into my top Dollar Tree hacks of 2023. Let's kick it off with one of my favorite craft supply cleaning hacks because I've heard from so many of you it has saved your brushes. You're going to need a makeup brush cleaning mitt like this or you can also get some facial scrubbers. You just want something that is silicone and has those little grooves to help work out the paint. Then I also like to use foam hand soap if you already have it at home that's fine or if you don't have foam hand soap you can get that at Dollar Tree as well. Squirt it onto the little scrubber with some warm water and start scrubbing. As you can see, the paint's coming out. Do it till the paint comes out clean, and that is going to truly clean your paintbrushes. I did not do this hack on these, and it left a lot of color residue. I went back through and did the same thing, and look, it took a lot of the pigment out. So you can even do it once things have been dried in your paintbrush. So hopefully, if you had any paintbrushes you thought you lost over the Christmas craft holiday, this saved you. This tape hack got so many comments when I shared it back in the spring. For this, you're just going to need some scotch tape or masking tape. I use it to help me put on my bracelets because I always struggle with these dainty ones to be able to clip it one-handed. So take the side with the loop you want to clip and just stick it to your wrist. Then you can grab the other side and it will hold it in place for you so you can apply your bracelet. The masking tape or scotch tape are not going to hurt your jewelry and you can do it all by yourself. You don't have to wait for someone else. If you watch a lot of YouTube hacks, you know that pool noodles are a great item to hack. Here are some of my favorites. The first thing I like to do is to use them to have my boots stand up because I don't like the ankles getting creased when they fall over in my closet. So I took this Dollar Tree pool noodle along with a Dollar Tree pool noodle knife, which actually works incredibly well. And I put two pieces into the calves of my boots. Then that way they are going to sit upright. It helps take up less space and it prolongs the boot. My other favorite thing to do is cut a slit down the center of the pool noodle and then apply it to any rough edges that I have around my house. It's a cheap way to toddler proof, especially because I have an almost four year old that loves to run in circles around my house and it's just going to keep his head level safe. I have a back and forth relationship with Dollar Tree florals because sometimes I can find amazing ones for $1.25 and other times they put these fake leaves on there that drive me nuts. So here is how I transformed these dogwood branches to make them a little more my style. I started by removing the tags and all of the green leaves because the stems were brown and by removing the green leaves it helped immensely. Then I was able to add them to my different containers by bending the ends to get the right length and they looked so much more high end without those fake green leaves. That is such a huge difference and it's something that you can easily do. Now what if you want to change it a little bit further? Well you can take other kinds, completely remove them and then you can also change the color because here the top ones were a beautiful brown stem and the bottoms were green. I don't know why they were two colors, but then I just went ahead and really quick spray painted the stems and then I re-added the tops so that they were all the same color. Again, another thing you can do quick and easy, make it look a lot more cohesive and high end. And these look great in my Pottery Barn dupe base. Quick and easy and you wouldn't guess that they were $1.25. I used some of these ring holders that are actually for pegboards and use them in the car to create additional hanging storage for my bags. I clipped them around the little pieces and put my bag there and it helped hold my purse while I drive. I remove them if somebody's sitting in the seat obviously so it doesn't poke them but it works nice when I'm driving by myself. I also love to keep some of these foam brushes in either my center console or in my little dashboard holder because when I'm sitting at a drive-thru or waiting for a pickup, I can clean my vents and keep my car clean. 
I picked up one of these self-adhesive wall tiles in this blue and white as well as a vase a while back and I decided to take my own spin on a DIY I saw my friend Shannon the daily DIYer do. So she took one of these tiles and covered a vase with it to make it look like a really fun decoupage or tiled vase. I started with that and what I did is I trimmed down the piece to the height of the glass and then I peeled off both the sticky as well as the protective layer on the back just to leave the tile. The adhesive wasn't sticking as well as I wanted it to, so I just went through with a little bit of double stick tape as well as some super glue gel from Dollar Tree and hooked it to my vase. Now I am treating the bottom of the vase actually as the top and you'll see why in just a second. This is one of my favorite hacks I've done in a long time. I was just gonna do the tape, but once I got everything on there, I needed the super glue and you can use some rubber bands to hold it while it sets. Then you can either take a push light or another battery operated light. I'm gonna use these ones from Amazon, but you could easily keep this all Dollar Tree if you want. And I am adding this to the top, which is the bottom of the vase because it gives me a flat surface. This is going to create a wireless lamp, which is what I needed for my house. This is an extra lampshade that I saved from a lamp we got rid of. And it might be a little big now, but actually in the room, it looks just fine. I love that I can turn this on with a remote and it looks really beautiful and trendy. The blue and the white is big at the high-end stores right now. And the set that I got from Amazon, it comes with four bulbs and two remotes. I can dim it. I can also set a 30 minute timer and I don't have to worry about Finn grabbing any cords. I live outside of Chicago, which is the windy city, and I can't tell you how many times I go outside, I get back in my car, and I have this windblown look in the worst way. So this I've been doing for years, and it has saved me so many times. I basically make a wind bag from items at Dollar Tree. I grab a variety of things like bounce sheets and scope for mouthwash and placards if I get stuff in my teeth. I also grab brushes, different headbands, just a variety of things that I know would come in clutch if I needed it. Then I just unpack it all, put it in a bag, and then it's in my car. You can either put it in your back seat if you've got an organizer or in your glove box, and then it is ready to go. So the next time you come into your car with your hair blowing around everywhere, you are not in a bind. After the holidays is when I feel like our house is the messiest. We've got stuff everywhere and it all accumulates on our stairs to go upstairs and then everybody acts like none of the stuff is theirs. Now, full transparency, a lot of this is mine. But to help with that, I grabbed some of these Dollar Tree dish pans and I just added a quick decal with my Cricut, but you could use rub-on transfers from Dollar Tree as well to put the names for everybody in your family, line them up on the stairs, and then you can add items to each person's bin. So when they're heading up to their bedroom, office, etc., they grab their bin and they can take their stuff upstairs. Then that way you don't have a tripping hazard on your stairs like we used to have. When I originally shared this idea for a glow bath using some of these Dollar Tree Glow products, so many of you commented and said, it shouldn't just be for kids, I want my own glow bath. And you guys, I cannot agree more. So you could do this for literally anyone, even yourself for self-care. You crack some of those so they glow, throw them in the bath, turn the lights off. It is super zen. Finn absolutely loves it, but I'd be lying if I didn't share that I also did this in our bathtub. It is super relaxing, fun, and affordable. If you are a person that works in the garage, works in a craft room, or just needs a solution for easy to grab paper towels, grab yourself a Dollar Tree plastic hanger, chop off the center. I just used some tin snips, and then you can insert it right over the outside of your paper towel roll. This is also great for camping, for RVs, for your garage. This is in our shed. Super quick and easy. You can hang it wherever you can find a spot, and then you've got paper towels at the ready. This next one is for my spray paint lovers. You are going to either want to grab a Lazy Susan or one of these plant rollers. Then you're also going to need some cooling racks from the kitchen section and we're going to make a makeshift Lazy Susan to help you spray paint. Just pop them together like so. You can put your items on top, give it a quick spray. It's going to keep it up off of your surface and then you can also twist it to get to the other sides before things are dried. I also like that the cooling rack is not hooked to the bottom because then all you got to do is pick up your item. You can let it go dry and put another one down and just keep it moving. I really needed some hanging storage in my craft room, so I decided to grab two Dollar Tree plungers as well as some of these hooks for the wall. 
started by removing the rubber and the stickers from the wood pieces and then I used tin snips to cut my two wall broom holders into four pieces and made sure that everything was going to fit when it came to my plunger handles. Now you could easily use dowel rods as well but we are keeping this Dollar Tree one-stop shop. Then I decided to spray paint mine white so it all matched, but you could also stain yours or do whatever color works. I then applied the two hangers to my plunger hook and then pushed it to the wall to make sure it was the right sizing. And once those are done, you can hang up whatever you want. I'm using some plant hooks also from Dollar Tree, and this has been a game changer since I did this. I'm able to put things like tape and transfer tape and cleaning supplies and everything right there by my filming setup. It has been a game changer. These next few are more of a wet tip versus a hack, but I love to buy these wood rounds, $1.25. You can't beat them for DIYs. I also love to grab things like plates, tablecloths, and the brown craft paper from Dollar Tree because again, great price, and these are great for painting and kids crafts. I put them down for my stuff just so I don't get paint everywhere and it's super helpful. I recently discovered these Barbie little bags and once you take the insides out, they are great to add a little bit of vinyl and organize things like glue sticks, weeding tools, a bunch of different options. And speaking of weeding tools, I'm not the biggest fan of Dollar Tree vinyl, but it is great to practice on, but I definitely 10 out of 10 would recommend all of their dupe Cricut tools. Their weeding pick, their scrapers, all those things, definitely pick them up, especially if you got a Cricut for Christmas. All of these work just as well with your Cricut projects. Another must grab for me at Dollar Tree that you can usually find in the back to school stuff in the summer are these containers. They stack perfectly, they take vinyl really nice or labels for the side, and I use them for a lot of my sub hobbies. So like making candles, stamps, clay, random stuff for Cricut, and I also make sure to grab the ones with the tops that lock on because those are going to keep all of your stuff contained in case they fall off a shelf or off your table. I also love these magazine files that are plastic. They will hook together in a row if you want them to. I labeled them and it is a great way to store a lot of my things like notebooks, items to file, different types of paper for my printer, and it keeps everything off the shelf and contained so I can find it. Also, for those who don't have a dedicated craft space, these divided like shower caddy looking things are perfect because you can add all of your most used craft items like glue sticks, weeding tool, glue gun, twine, and then you can take that with you wherever you need to craft within your house. It'll save you a ton of time and effort. Dollar Tree's Juncture brand has some really cute bandanas this year. I grabbed them to use as napkins. I recently saw my friend Shannon over at the Daily DIYer do this with some patriotic napkins, so I decided to grab some for my table as well because we influence each other, as you know. Now to make these fun bows, you're going to take a bandana, fold it in half as a triangle, fold it in strips like this, flip it over like a cancer support ribbon, and then we're just gonna slide the napkin ring over two sides and then fluff the little pieces with our fingers. That creates a really fun little bow to put on top of these chargers, which also came from Dollar Tree, and it's just a fun way to add color to your tablescape. And because the bandanas were so cheap, I spent a little bit more on these Target napkin rings from Hearth and Hand, and they are so beautiful and they make it look awesome. The smaller circular plate is also from Dollar Tree, so you can get really affordable but really pretty centerpieces. In our new house, I absolutely love the sunroom that we have. We use it as Finn's toy room and it gets a ton of natural light, but that also comes with dust on these blinds and I was feeling really overwhelmed until I saw this hack on TikTok from Make It With Micah where she took some of these dusting cloths and some tongs from Dollar Tree, cut the dusting cloth in half, wrapped it around one side of the tongs with a rubber band, and then repeated it on the other side. This creates a fun little clamp that will literally change your life when it comes to cleaning your blinds. I put it on there. You can also add a little spritz of cleaning solution. I run it on there. It grabs all the dust, and then I just take the pads off, toss them in the washing machine, replace them with the rubber bands, and do it all over again. Love it. Something else that gets me overwhelmed when it comes to cleaning is from my four-legged friend, Mr. Sebastian here. He's a black lab, obviously, so he has a lot of hair around our house. What I like to do is grab some Dollar Tree lint rollers and it helps get his hair up. 
It's also really good for cleaning off our lampshades. And I also like to use this after the holidays if I have any bits of glitter from wrapping that I didn't use, it picks it up so easily. Now it might feel a little early, but this is when they start putting out the spring stuff within the next couple weeks. And so these are items you want to grab. These metal garden hooks are amazing for blanket ladders and decor to be used not as they were originally intended, but as a hack. I like to put them on my blanket ladders to hang wreaths for all of the different seasons. It really spices up that blanket ladder and then I don't have to have a ton of bulk to make it look like it's full. Also speaking of blanket ladders, if you want to make sure they don't scratch your wall or if you have like large mirrors or anything like that, take these felt packs you can get in the automotive hardware aisle and add them to your blanket ladders or if you have like leaning mirrors, this is going to make it so anything on your wall, if it shimmies, gets bumped, whatever, it's not going to put a mark on your wall because it's leaning on the fabric instead. It's the same thought process as putting it on the bottom of your chairs, but this is just going to protect your walls as well. A couple other great uses for these hooks that I have found is one, hanging them over our deck to dry wet pool items, hanging them over the door to my closet to put out my clothes for the next day. I use them to hang up Finn's toys, hang up our little kneeling pad in the bathroom so it doesn't get soaked. And it's also great for things on the front porch like signs and wreaths. And I also like to use them in the bathroom over the curtain rod to hang up my Cricut mats after I've washed them. This is a great time of year to get them clean. You're going to grab yourself some Dawn dish soap from the Dollar Tree, or you could also use stuff you already have at home, making it free essentially. And you're going to add some water and some soap to your mat. Now I get things stuck there like my hair, dog hair, it gets kind of nasty. I am going to scrape all of the bits to the side, then get them off, rinse it off, and then hang them up with those hooks to dry overnight. Now I haven't had any issues. I can get two to four washes out of mine and they're still pretty sticky. You just don't want to scrape too hard and remove the adhesive. And while you're at it, this is also a great time of year to grab these microfiber cloths from Dollar Tree and get your machine clean. I do the outside with the mitt just to get it clean. Then I open the drawers, get all of that wiped up. And then to get rid of any grime, I use some Q-tips with either a little bit of water or just a little bit of multi-surface spray. I just put a little bit on there and then I use it to get any of the little adhesive bits or anything in there. Now you want to make sure that you're not touching the bar that the little housing slides on or that black band in the back, but you can get around all of your little pieces. I also like to clean my blade. This isn't going to sharpen your blade, but it is going to get rid of any sticky adhesive residue that's left on there. Just ball up some foil and stab it in there carefully a few times. That will get it clean and then you will be good to go for the new year with a nice clean machine. If you like soft chocolate chip cookies that melt in your mouth, this hack is for you. You're gonna wanna pick up some Jell-O vanilla pudding. I usually do the instant, but either will work. And I follow the Nestle Toll House cookie recipe, so I will link that down below. You're gonna do your sugars and butter, mix that all together. Then you're gonna add your eggs, vanilla, and the whole packet of the pudding mix. You don't have to add anything else, but the way this reacts within the dough, it's going to give you amazingly moist cookies. Once that's all mixed together, then in goes your dry ingredients, which is flour, baking soda, and salt. And then once that's all combined, you are going to add your chocolate chips, fold them in. And then I like to use a one and a quarter tablespoon cookie scoop, but you could also use spoons to do this. I put them on parchment paper. They go in the oven at 350, starting at about nine minutes. It's anywhere from nine to 12 minutes, depending on your oven. Just keep an eye on them. And what you're going for is the brown on the outside, but just nice and kind of fluffy doughy on the inside. Let them completely cool. And these things are heavenly. My dad was here the day that I was cooking these and he definitely approved as well. All right, so what about my craft buddies who aren't big bakers? No worries, I'm gonna make your house smell like you are. Preheat the oven to 300 degrees, put two capfuls of vanilla extract in an oven safe container. I use my Pyrex, pop it in, and after about 25 to 30 minutes on that 300 degrees, your house is gonna smell heavenly. 
This next one is inspired by my mom because she likes to bring a green salad as her dish to pass to parties. I decided to grab some muffin tins to help take any of those toppings that you want to take to the party. So I'm adding cheese, some cut up boiled egg, cucumber, tomato, croutons, even some olives. You can put whatever you want in here. And then you just bring it to the party with a bowl full of chopped up lettuce of your choice. And then the guests can grab with the little tongs any toppings that they want to make their salad. This is also great for taco bars, for baked potato bars, and you can also fill this with toppings for hamburgers, hot dogs, and brats to make it easy for people to self-serve and everything stays in its own container. Another barbecue must have our coffee filters because they are the perfect holder for brats and hot dogs. You just put your bun right in there. It makes it easy to put all of your toppings on and then it is easy to go. If you have double header sports events this summer, especially baseball, softball, this is great for less waste and it takes up a lot less room in your bags. Just throw it in there, 150 for $1.25. Another great use is to use it on your dessert table, especially when you're outside by the pool. Folks can just grab those, use them kind of as a napkin, but you can do it a lot cheaper. And it's also gonna take up a lot less room in your garbage, especially for parties than a traditional plate or napkin would, which is really nice when it comes to those parties because you know you always have a party a couple days after garbage day and your garbage is overflowing. At least that always happens to us. Over the many years I've been shopping at Dollar Tree, I have found that these buckets work way better than the Dollar Tree waste baskets. If you look at the opening, they're about the same size, but this top is so much bigger. I use these in my car, in my craft room, sometimes in our bathrooms where people aren't gonna see them underneath the sink. It makes it so much easier to just toss stuff in because the opening is so much bigger. And I like the way that all the space in the surface area is distributed. It doesn't fall over as much as you would think. And they also have tan ones if you want it more aesthetic. I'm only joking. Springtime is full of celebrations and sometimes you don't wanna spend a bajillion dollars on a bag, but Dollar Tree maybe doesn't have the saying that you want. Let me show you this fun hack. Grab whatever size you want. I really like these craft bags and you can add vinyl to them to customize them with characters or different sayings. I really love this one that says, congrats, you totally nailed it. Think about a friend getting promoted or you've got somebody that is close to you who just like killed it on a work project and you wanna celebrate them. All you have to do is take some paper transfer tape on some permanent vinyl. The paper transfer tape makes it so it's not gonna rip that bag right up and voila. And then when it comes time to wrap the gift, I love Dollar Tree tissue paper. I'm sure you know about this already, but I did want to share this hack again. I shared around Christmas time because so many of you said that it was so helpful. So find yourself some cute tissue paper. I opted for these rainbows and squiggles. Take your tissue paper and you are going to want to start with a print and you're going to wrap up your item. Then you're going to take it and stick that right in your bag. So you've got a little bit of fluff already. Then we're going to start with a pattern piece and put that face down on the table. And then we're gonna add a variety of colors in kind of a alternating way. You see how the corners are going a different direction. Then all you have to do is flip it over, pinch the bottom center, give it just a little twist and you can shove it right in the bag and it looks like a million bucks. So the little twist and stuff process is my favorite. You can even save a little bit more money by using tissue you already have. This is a really fun way to wrap things up and make folks feel special. If you're a crafter, I'm sure you've seen these hot glue finger protectors in the craft section, but what about these in the nail aisle? These are actually to take off your like no chip manicure, but what I like to use them for is for hot glue. They're a lot bigger, they cover my finger pads a lot better, and they're not as tight on my fingers as those hot pink ones, which I think is a win all around. Now, if you don't want things on your fingers, you can use a silicone spatula. I learned this from my friend Jennifer. Her channel will be linked down below. You can use it to press it down and then peel off any hot glue. If you have travel coming up, here are some of my favorite hacks from Dollar Tree to make it easier. For the travel toiletries, I like to use these dressing containers versus the plastic ones at Dollar Tree. These don't crack. I really like that they fit a ton of different items in there. And the best thing about it is you can flip them inside out when you get home, take all the pieces out because it's made for salad dressing, so they want you to be able to clean it. You can get all of those little bits out and it's ready to go for next time. Those other ones are way harder to clean. This one is so much easier. While you're at it, grab yourself a mesh laundry bag, throw it in your bag and use this as a hamper while you're away. 
I like to take these when we go to the lake or we fly anywhere because we can put all of our dirty clothes in the bag. We know what's dirty, what's clean, and it keeps it from piling up on the floor. And I don't know about you, but I hate when my jewelry tangles when I travel, so I eliminate that problem by using these small little hardware storage cases from the automotive aisle. You can also find something similar in the craft section sometimes, and I like to use these to put all of my jewelry in the individual compartments. You can shut it and it's ready to go. I throw it in my backpack and if it jingles around because it's divided, they're not going to get mixed up, they're not going to tangle, and it's going to keep all of your stuff all in line so you don't have any headaches. Another jewelry hack that is great for summer travel is grabbing one of these pill organizers and just taking a little bit of acetone and removing all of the words on the front. Then that way you can see directly into each of the compartments and you can use it as a jewelry organizer for travel. You can put one item per container, then your necklaces will not get tangled up, your earrings will stay together, and it's got a really good sized profile that you won't need to have a ton of space to put it in your bag. And if you have any slots left, you can add things like medication or any other small items you don't want to lose and keep organized. I'm a sucker for a good Amazon hack, but this Dollar Tree hack even beats Amazon. Grab some of these clips because on Amazon, they are from seven to $12 for a pack of six. At Dollar Tree, you're gonna pay $1.25. I hate when my towel falls off of my beach chair, and so this is a really easy way to do it, and they're small enough to pack. You can just put your towel out, clip it onto the chair, and it makes it easy if you want to sit up while you're tanning, lay it down, a variety of different ways that you can lay it and your towel is not going to budge. It's also great if you wanna put your towel on the back of a chair to dry, or if you are at a resort and you have a balcony, you can put your stuff on the balcony rail and then use the clips so that your stuff doesn't fall off down to the ground below. Now you could always put it in your bathroom, but I find that the outside air and the sunlight really help dry your stuff quickly, especially on vacation. So many of you told me that you were gonna try this next hack with either your kids or grandkids, and the great thing is it's not just a kid's hack. Grab yourself one of these canvases, and then I decided to do a kid's one, but you could do really whatever you want. You could do logos, you could do sayings, you could do different sports teams. I searched for a Clifford the Big Red Dog coloring page because that is our vibe right now at our house. I uploaded it into Design Space and I'm using the Magic Eraser to get rid of any of the white areas that I don't want. I also had to use the actual eraser to get rid of the border, but once I did, I could save it as a cut image, import it, and then cut it to size on some heat transfer vinyl. Remember to mirror your settings if you are going to use heat transfer vinyl, but once it was cut and weeded, then I just used my little mini press to apply it right onto the canvas. I saw this on TikTok from DIYaholic, and I thought it was genius. She did them as party favors for her daughter's birthday, I believe, and I thought Finn would absolutely love this, but how fun would this be for fall or Christmas to do a friends like wine and paint night? You could even do some really fun adult coloring pages if you wanted to weed those all out. I just had to make sure that I was giving it some pressure underneath by carefully using a towel. But then once it was set, I could peel it off and we've got two canvases that Finn can color on and decorate. And I decided to just let him use markers, but you could really let your kids do whatever dependent on their age, which is great, super custom. And you can get a lot of those niche characters that maybe you can't find merch of. Another toddler approved DIY hack are these little pump up dispensers that you can find in the nail makeup aisle. I like to put a little bit of paint in them so that we can pump them up and Finn just has a little bit to work with if we're painting. I also like to keep one of these in my craft room with black and one with white paint in them because it's nice to touch up any of my stencil signs that I make. And the cleanup is super easy. You just wipe it off with a wet paper towel and it is good to go for next time. And the lid, I haven't had any issues with it drying out on me. This one I've been wanting to try for so long. You're gonna need shaving cream and baking soda. I dumped the whole box of baking soda as well as a couple sprays of the shaving cream into this Dollar Tree dish pan and mixed it up with my hands. I repeated this process three times until I got the consistency of snow. The nice thing is it's not cold, but it will pack together, and this dish pan is the perfect container for a sensory bin. I also grabbed some Dollar Tree Elf wrapping paper, and I wrapped it over the top of our kitchen table, kind of as a tablecloth, but when you think about how much you get in a $1.25 roll of paper, it's going to cover a lot more ground than just a $1.25 tablecloth. 
My last step before I surprised Mr. Finn was to add some of his Hot Wheels cars that he already had that made me think of snow and outdoorsiness, and he went to town. That kid absolutely had a field day with this. Loved the texture. It's a little bit different than his kinetic sand, and we will be definitely doing this again. For that container, I would suggest maybe doing a double batch, but the great thing is too, if any of it ends up on the table, Buddy the Elf is gonna catch it. If you've been a craft buddy for a while, you know that I love screen printing items, and you've asked if you could do it without your Cricut. Yes, you could do it without a Cricut. Grab a Dollar Tree stencil, some of this 3D fabric paint, and I am going with this flower sack towel. Put your stencil down where you want it to go, put some tape so it doesn't move around, and add some of that paint to a paper towel. I'm using a brush that I don't care too much about. I'm making sure that I don't have a ton of product on there, and I'm just gonna stipple it across the top just like you would stencil. I'm gonna peel it off, let it dry, and heat set it according to the package directions, and bada bing, bada boom, good to go. Super easy, nobody would guess that you made this with Dollar Tree items. Back in the summertime, I shared with you guys that you could use some dish soap to add some fun bubbles to your kids' water tables. So many of you commented and said that kids' bubble bath or the No More Tears items would be so much better, and you guys were so right. That's what I love about this community. You give me so many tips, so now I am going to use either kids' bubble bath or shampoo to add some fun bubbles this summer to Finn's water table that he loves to play with. Another thing that he loves to play in is the sandbox, and you cannot beat the Dollar Tree dog scoops for the pool, the beach, or your sandbox. These things are so good quality. They're really fun. Your kids will love them. Trust me. So pick them up when we head into summertime. And finally, I couldn't forget my buddy Sebastian. Here is how I have tricked out his collar with a fun bandana for every season this year. I did this and created this template back in the fall for a mystery box because I got some fabric and I wasn't sure how to use it. And now I want to make these for Sebastian for every season because he's not a big like, let's wear a sweater or let's wear something else. So I decided to make these to hook to his collar. You're going to want to press your fabric to get rid of any wrinkles and then use my template with your fabric folded in half so you create this kind of long triangle shape. Once you get all of your wrinkles out, then we're going to go through and create some pleats. So you're going to take your top piece, pull it down, and then do either side of the pointed piece of the triangle. So then that way you're going to create a seam with hot glue. I'm just using my little Cricut Easy Press because it's small, but you could use an iron for this or honestly, carefully, even a hair straightener. Just use a Teflon sheet if you don't have anything else. Then I'm taking some hot glue. I'm creating a little flap at the top. You want to make sure it stays open so you can insert the collar. And then I am using hot glue on either side to create my seams. Because this isn't being pulled or tugged at, it's totally fine with the hot glue. If you want to hand stitch it, fine, but you don't have to. All you have to do is slide the collar through the loop and then you can hook it right on just like a regular collar and look how cute he looks. He would fight me if it was anything else. So the fact that it's on the collar makes it work. And he was so confused as to why I was in his face with a camera, but I just kept telling him how good he looked and he was happy about it. That's gonna do it for this video. Thanks so much for watching. If you would like to opt in to my Craft Buddy email list, be sure to scan this QR code or head down to the description so that I will send you an email every time I post a new video. I've been doing some fun things over there like secret email giveaways. So if you've seen different comments being posted by a lot of people and wondering where they came from, chances are it's from the email list. So if you wanna join in on that fun, be sure to join the Whiskey Craft Buddies email newsletter. I am so incredibly excited for what 2024 is going to bring here on Whiskey and Wit, but before we get into the new year, I wanted to take a second to thank you from the bottom of my heart for supporting this channel, for supporting my family, and for supporting my dream of sharing my crafts and my content with so many craft buddies. So no matter if you've been a craft buddy for five minutes or the past five years, Thank you. No, I am so grateful to have you guys along for the ride and I would not be able to do what I do if it wasn't for you guys. So thanks for a wonderful, wonderful year and I will see you guys in 2024. Bye.